I am contractually obliged to start with the co-creator, executive producer, and he does star as Ian Grimm, the great Rob McElhenney. <laughs> Rob, did I wait long enough for the applause to swell? Next, our, the co-creator and executive producer starring as herself every day, Megan Gans. And executive producer, and he stars as David because he is David Hornsby. And now, I'm, by the way, I'm loving my pro wrestler announcer voice. And now, from the MQ cast, she plays the brilliant mess populi, Charlotte Nickdow. <laughs> Charlotte did take a little bit of a spill, so hence the, the boot on her, but she's doing fine. Next, as Brad Bakshi, he embodies evil in all its variant forms, Danny Pudi. And playing Dana, the tester to streamer to coder to, well, you will see what comes next, Imani Hakim. <laughs> and alongside her as Rachel, the voice of reason and social justice, and, well, you will see what comes next, Ashley Birch. <laughs> and last. But not least, as Joe, the scariest assistant in history, Jesse Ennis! <laughs> That's how you do it. Welcome, guys. Let's get right into it. The, the chemistry of the cast is, um, is just undeniable. I mean, I, th I think season one, we realized um, that we had a show, I think, within a half a day of shooting. And you don't really have a TV show if the actors don't gel and if it feels like we have real chemistry. The show is all about like egos and how you set those aside to get uh, creative work done. And so we're going to see how they fare, their partnership fares, when they're outside the protective bubble of Mythic Quest. We find out that Dana and Ian have a lot of similarities, and they're just like, this unlikely duo and Dana's really coming into her own because in season one we see Dana as this nice person who doesn't really say a lot <laughs> but Dana isn't nice <laughs> she's kind but don't take her kindness for weakness and she she has this this passion in a pit of her gut and she doesn't know exactly how to tackle that until she aligns with Ian and Poppy and, by the way, who are terrible bosses, but <laughs> <laughs> masterminds at what they do. Um, and she takes what her bosses are willing to give her, and she makes it her own, and she just slays, really. <laughs> she does, in fact, slay. Yeah. Repeatedly. I think what we discover about Rachel in this season is that she's uh, kind of dumb, <laughs> actually. Um, and that um, she's sort of been adopting, like, certain types of language and certain types of morals because she thinks it's the right thing to do and she's sort of realizing that she actually wants different things because she's a dum-dum also. Uh, but it's very confusing. And so there's a bit of an existential crisis that she has going into the season of like, who am I, what am I willing to do, and what am I actually good at? Because it turns out I'm not smart enough to be a writer. <laughs> Firstly, I think that one of the differences between our characters and who we are and our real relationship is one of the things that serves the relationship of the characters well. See, I'm starting the question in a way that's <laughs> reflective of what my brain was doing as you asked it, um, uh, which is that we have a lot of respect for each other and we, uh, we're really good friends and so we're able to be horrible to each other on screen. But I think that also, uh, it lays a foundation for what Poppy and Ian's relationship really is, which is that they're best friends and they need each other and they care about each other deeply and they just kind of don't know... Like, they need couples counselling, you know? Yeah, big time. <laughs>
I don't think self-reflection, it would be a strong suit of either one of them. Um, and then I think if they were able to, to figure out those problems, there would be no show. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what the show is about, is, the, is, is taking people who are very gifted and, um, and driven and ambitious and, and want something desperately. They want to make the greatest game that they possibly can. And they recognize that they need each other. Um, and that they do love each other, but it's a constant push-pull because they have different wants and needs within the relationship and different working styles. And so much of the show is about collaboration and uh, working together and, and the pitfalls and struggles and the conflicts that come from that. And if you strip that away, then the show goes away. My journey is... Um is well this season specifically you'll see that uh, Ian and Poppy have have left and uh, thus left me in charge and uh, we get to see what it's like when uh, when Mythic Quest is left at the helm of of uh, David Brittlesby which uh, I'm on time and I'm budget baby <laughs> that's uh, if I had a tattoo that's what my character would have for Brad um, going to prison was a win so um, it was really fun to play that and then uh, as you see uh, seen in the trailer here um, he finds his way back into Mythic Quest, this time in a new role as a janitor, <laughs> just the janitor. And it's this, uh, it's this fun journey where I believe, you know, maybe it's time for me to reform. I'm a changed man. David may be a little suspicious of my behavior, what I'm up to, um, you know, and I have access to different places in the building too. When you're on the acting side of it, things just happen and you don't realize the level of skill and commitment and communication that needs to take place between the crew for things to run smoothly. And you can just ask for any ridiculous thing and it'll happen so quickly. And it's absolutely astonishing. So it just gave me such a huge appreciation for the amazing crew that the EPs have put together. I know for me, when I, I get excited when we start breaking stories and then we, when, when the scripts start coming in, when the writers are, have finished their drafts and to see the different combinations of people um, is really fun. So, um, Imani and I were talking about in season two that we hadn't done a lot of just I and Dana scenes together. So, um, when we started talking about season three, we started pitching on a, a bunch of different scenarios in which I and Dana could be in scenes together. And th those were some of my favorite scenes that I got to shoot uh, this year. So, that was ju just really fun to approach things in terms of pairings and thinking about, like, oh, I think it would be really great not only for a narrative arc, but also just for an enjoyment, like the enjoyment of, of making the show. Yeah, I'd say there's parts of us that are incorporated into these characters, um, parts of us that are new. I didn't know anything about monetization. Got to meet with someone who knows a lot about monetization, so that was fun. I hope I'm not as evil as Brad in real life. Um, but then, you know, uh, there's also parts of me that are um, part of Brad, too. And I can tell you there was a moment on Sunny because we made that show in the beginning before there was social media, so we had no interaction with fans. We didn't have live events or anything. And we came to Comic-Con very early in the run, maybe season four, and we had no idea whether people were going to show up. And we were in this hall, and about 4,000 people showed up. And that kind of demonstrated to us that we were onto something. And I think we're probably, it feels like that moment is happening right now for Mythic Quest. Which is great.